the linear function which represent a line m is the slope of this line b is the y intercept of the line or the intersection part with y axis which is exactly this point this is we call it the y intercept y intercept to find y intercept in any function you just put x equal to zero which is fair enough here yeah? at this point x equal to what x equal to zero and m is the slope to find the slope you just use the formula rise over the run if you call this rise and this is a run so the slope m is the rise over the run okay or if you have the uh, coordinates of these two points x1 y1 the first point the second point x2 and y2 you can use the formula for the slope the difference of y over the difference of x we know this one if b equal to zero here b equal to zero y the y intercept the line intersect y and zero in the origin right so when b is zero your line will go through the origin okay what about if m equal to zero if m equal to zero here we have y equal to b which is a constant and we call this one a constant function so the constant function this is y here equal to minus 4 this is a horizontal line okay for this linear function yes this is in the formula y equal to mx plus b so m is 2 so the slope is 2 the y intercept is 3 okay so you can graph the line by this is a y intercept y equal to 3 okay how to find x intercept you put f of x equal to 0 so move this one to the other side so x will equal to minus 3 over 2 which is exactly minus 1.5 here at this point okay so once you know these two points you can link these two point to have your line for this function in front of x you have the slope minus one and this one is the y-intercept so this is b this is m okay if you graph this one you know the y-intercept one so your line intersect y-axis in one to find x intercept you put the function equal to zero so you have minus zero x plus one you need x so you move it to the other side x equal to one so your line intersect x axis in one as well link these two and extend them you will have your line next function is the quadratic function this is the standard formula for the quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c if a the coefficient of x squared positive your graph will be upward if a is negative your parabola will be downward this shape we call it parabola so a controlling the shape upward or down this turning point, we call it turning point or vertex. It's 
sometimes it will be a maximum like this case and sometimes will be minimum like this case. How to find this vertex? You get the x coordinate for the vertex or the turning point from the formula x equal to minus b over 2a. You have the x coordinate for the vertex point, substitute in your quadratic formula here to find y. So you have the turning point. Also, you can find the x-intercept by putting y equal to 0 and solve the equation 0 equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. c is the y-intercept because to find the y-intercept, you put x equal to 0. So when you put x equal to 0, y equal to c, which is the y-intercept. This is the formula to find the roots of the uh, equation, the quadratic function equal to zero, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. If you put the function equal to zero, you can find the x-intercept from this formula, or you can use your calculator. Let's have this example. So here, a is what? One, b minus four, c equal to four, so C is the y-intercept, I know this. So the y-intercept should have x equal to zero. So this is x equal to zero, and this is the value of y. This is this, the y-intercept. Okay, if you put the function equal to zero, okay, you can factorize or use your calculator to find the roots of this one. So, yes, I can factorize this one. This is a complete square, to be honest. Y is complete square, x plus, sorry, minus, because I have minus in the middle. So x minus 2 square equal to 0. Because if I expand this one, I have x square, the square of the first one, minus, because I have minus in the middle, 2 times 2 times x times minus times 2 plus the second one squared. So you have x squared minus 4x plus 4. So you have only in this case you have one root, repeated root, x equal to 2. So your uh, quadratic uh, curve will intersect x at 2. The vertex, how to find the vertex? You have a formula for the vertex. What is the formula for the vertex? The x-axis for this one is x equal to minus p over 2. What's b? b is here. So minus minus 4 over 2. a is here. So 4 over 2, which is 2. Once I have x, I can substitute in the function by x equal to the value I have, 2. So go for your original function and substitute x by 2. Sorry, this is 4. So I have 4 minus 8 plus 4. So this is 0. OK, so the vertex will be 2 and 0. Yeah, if you graph it, we have x-intercept only 2, okay? And also your turning point at 2 and 0, so it will be up from both sides, right? So in this case, we call the turning point of the vertex minimum value of the function there. This second example, you have A here, you have B here, you have C here, which is the y-intercept, okay? And you can follow the steps to graph your, okay? If you finish, just go to the uh, curve for this one, okay? And check your x-intercept is the same, your vertex is the same, your y-intercept is the same, 
it will be correct. Okay. I just clear out this one for you. So try to solve it and check with your graph. You have extra exercise here. You can do it. To find the value of the function at 0, you just substitute x equal to 0. And we know when x equal to 0, it means you find y-intercept. Okay? Open upward or open downward depends on the A. A is negative, so it will be downward. So you can go through this exercise. Here is a solution. Okay. You can check your answer. Here is the graph. I put the coordinate for the x coordinate, x intercept, and for the vertex, and for the y intercept. Here is the second one. I put also the vertex and the y intercept. Let's go for the next function, exponential function. The exponential function for is f of x equal to a times b to the x. A is a constant. B is a base, which is not equal to 1, any positive real number, but not 1. X, we call it the exponent. B, we call it the base. Okay? X could be any real number, but the base B uh, not be equal to 1, but any uh, positive real number. Here is the exponential function. What is the behavior when b, the base, bigger than 1? We have something we call it exponential growth. So your function will be increasing from left to right. But if your base between 0 and 1, it will be exponential decay. And this first one in the base grip, greater than 1, your function from left to right increasing. F, B, the base between 0 and 1, your function from left to right decreasing. The y-intercept, when you put x equal to 0 over here, so any value to the power 0 is 1, so you end, over with, end up with A. So your y-intercept is always 0 as x and a as y. OK, remember the asymptotes? We have a vertical asympt uh, horizontal asymptotes, right? But we don't have a vertical asymptotes because we don't have a gap in the uh, curve, OK? So we have horizontal asymptotes, which is x-axis. What is the equation of x-axis? y equal to 0. Also, in both cases, either b uh, greater than 1 or b between 0 and 1 in the case of exponential growth or in the case of uh, exponential decay, both of them having y-intercept as uh, 0 and a. Okay? Here, he got the case when a equal to 1. This is why the intersect at 0 and 1. Here also we take the case where a equal to 1. Okay. The domain of this function, as you see from left to right, which is the value of x, domain related to x, x value from left to right, minus infinity to positive infinity. What about the range? The range, as you see here, in the exponential growth, you start from 0 to infinity, okay? In the exponential decay, also the same, from minus infinity to 0, okay? But this is 
when A negative, right? Okay. And here A positive because you end up with uh, A. So A controlling uh, uh, the value of Y. Okay. Now let's have example like this one. What's A? A is two. B. 3, so B is positive here, uh, bigger than uh, 1, sorry. Okay. So B, B bigger than 1, so you have exponential growth, yes. And the Y-intercept is, yes, 0 and A. What's A? A is 2, so here the Y-intercept is 0 and 2. Okay, and because B bigger than 1, we have exponential growth okay the other function g of x a equal to 5 but b in this case between 0 and 1 so we have yeah exponential decay what is the y intercept similar to the previous one 0 and a so this is 0 and a a is 5. And in both cases, we have horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis, right? X-axis is uh, horizontal asymptotes for the curve of the exponential decay or the exponential growth. Okay. You have exercise here. You can go through it. And after you finish, you check with the, you, this two graph for this two exercise. Okay. Now, logarithm function. A is a constant. B is the base of the logarithm. Okay. We have also B shouldn't be one. Okay. Any positive real number because if you press in your calculator logarithm for negative or zero, he give you math error because the logarithm function is not defined as at x equal to zero, right? It's not defined. Okay. We have these two cases. Yes, similar to the previous one. Here, we have a equal to one. The constant here, we have it one. And here also we have a equal to one. So the x-intercept is one, and zero, which is A and zero, okay? So we notice in the previous one, just to compare between the logarithm and the exponential, the exponential has Y intercept, okay? But the logarithm has X intercept, okay? Be careful with this one. So, FB, the base of the logarithm bigger than one, similar to the exponential one, you have growth exponential uh, logarithm uh, growth. And FB between zero and one, you have logarithm uh, decay. Okay? So the x intercept is A and zero. Okay? He got here A equal to 1 in this case. The asymptotes, yes. In the exponential, we have horizontal asymptote. In the logarithm, we have vertical asymptote. We write it VA, vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is the y-axis. What is the equation of the y-axis? X equal to 0. Okay? So the vertical asymptote is X equal to 0. In the exponential one, we have horizontal asymptote, which is x-axis, okay? The domain for the uh, logarithm, yes, we said logarithm is, function is not defined for zero, so it is only defined for positive value. So it is the open interval zero and one. This is the domain for the logarithm function. What about the range? As you see here, the range minus infinity and positive infinity. So range is the values of y. 
So the far down is minus infinity, the bar up is positive infinity. This is the range. Although the domain is a positive value, the range is all values, negative and positive. Okay. Remember, logarithm growth and logarithm decay, yes, slowly compared to exponential function. Okay. Now you have some practice to do. Find the x-intercept and sketch the graph. Okay. A equal to 3. The base here is 2. So the base bigger than 1. So you have logarithm growth. What is the x-intercept? Remember, in the logarithm function, you have x-intercept. In the exponential function, you have y-intercept. Okay. So if you bought... Uh, in the x-axis, you put y equal to 0. What does it mean? It means this is 0. So this is never b0. So what is b0? This one. So x should be 2 to the power 0, which is 1. Because the inverse function for the logarithm is the exponential function. For the second one, yes, the base here, this is exactly logarithm for x for the natural number e. We know all of us, e is roughly 2.71, okay? Now, you have some exercise to do. If you would like to sketch any graph, you need some points. You can substitute here and find the value. And then you can sketch the graph. As we said, to sketch the logarithm, you need the x-intercept. Okay? Because you don't have y-intercept. Logarithm curve doesn't intersect y-axis. It's also only intersect x-axis. But the opposite in the exponential is intersect y, but never touch x-axis. Okay, go through this one. Now, we have the least integer function. What does it mean, least integer function? It means if you are, have a value in the least integer function, with they make it like square bracket, two square bracket, so you get the greatest number than the number you have inside this function. So what's bigger than 2.3 as integer is 3. What is bigger than minus 1.7 is minus 1, okay? For integer, you have the same value, right? What is less than this one? 0, okay? If you have uh, a function between minus three, this one to graph this one. We said between minus three and minus two, you have the bigger one, minus two. And you have, this is, we call it the stairs function. Okay. Why this one equal to five? Because the least integer function taking the bigger than this one, which is five. The bigger than this one, remember, for the negative, you have minus two. The bigger than this one, you have 1. The bigger from this one, you have 0. Okay? This is make it easy for you to have the real line. Okay? And you can catch what is less than this value. It will be to the right. Okay? The integer to the right of this one. What is the integer bigger than this one? Yeah, 0. What's the bi integer bigger than this one? It's 1. What is the integer bigger than this one? It's 5. This is an easy way to find the least integer uh, function value. Now you have some exercise to do. Now the hyperbolic function is algebraic expression from the exponential function e to the x. 
right? So sinh x is uh, uh, algebraic terms e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. And the hyperbolic cosine, which is called cosine x, is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. Okay? If we can check, we will find sinh minus x equal to the e to the x minus 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 will be plus over 2. Okay? If you take minus as a common factor, you will have e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. This is exactly minus sinh x. When we have this property, f of minus x equal to f minus f of x, we call this one odd function. Okay? But cosine minus x, we have e to the minus x plus e minus minus would be plus x over 2. We can permute this one because the addition is additive. Okay. So we still have the same function cosine x. We know if we have f of minus x equal to f of x, this is we call it even function. So sinh x is odd function, cosine x is even function. Okay, the graph of the sinh passes through the origin. Domain is minus infinity to infinity. Range is minus infinity to infinity. Why? This is coming from the exponential function, right? So this is a function. So the, the x-intercept is zero and the y-intercept is zero. Okay, and to the right, you have positive value to the left, you have a negative value, right? This is a hyperbolic sinh function. It is odd function from the graph because it is symmetric with respect to the origin. So it is symmetric with respect to the origin. So it is odd function. Hyperbolic cosine, if you put x equal to 0, so cosine 0 equal to e to the 0 plus e to the 0 over 2. e to the 0 is 1, so I have 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. So cosine 0 is 1. So the cosine intersects the y-axis at y equal to 1. So the intersection point is 0 and 1 for the cosine, okay? Also the domain is the value of x from, come from left to right, so it will be minus infinity and positive infinity. What about the range? The range is the value of y come from down to up, so the first value of y is one, and the maximum value of y is infinity. Okay. The range is close at 1 to infinity because we, we don't have a hole here. The value of x equal to 0 is 1. Now let's go for the uh, graph of tan. As we see in the geometric function, tan x equal to sine over cosine. Also tan of x is the algebraic expression sine x over cosine x. So here we have two horizontal asymptotes one up and one down up at y equal to one down at minus one so your tang value between minus one and positive one okay exactly like the sine value and cosine value but the difference 
Tanh x is not a periodic function, but sine x and cosine x are periodic function with a period 2 pi. Okay, be careful with that. Domain between minus infinity and positive infinity, and the range, as you see, the value of cosine between uh, minus 1 and positive 1. Okay. Now you have this example. If you would like to have sine 2, you just plug in x equal to 2, right? Find cosine 2, just substitute x equal to 2. Okay. Now you have some practice to do here. Okay. This is minus 1. So you can use your calculator to find out the value, approximate value of this one for sure, because 2e uh, e is irrational function, Ir uh, irrational value, sorry. How to verify cosine square minus sine square equal to 1? Remember, in the geometric, we have, uh, similar to this one, sine square x plus cosine square x equal to 1. In this one, we call it the transgeometric uh, formula. But here, instead of plus, you have minus. What is the difference? Here, we have hyperbolic curve, right? Here, we have elliptic curve. This is the difference. This is why we, we have this formula with a minus, not with plus. Okay? Just substitute by cosine, e to the x minus uh, plus e to the minus x over 2, and the sine e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. Square it. After you expand this one, you will get 1. Okay? Now, how to find sine 3? Just plug in e to the 3 minus 3 e to the over 2 and you can find cosine plus e to the minus 3 over 2 tangent you just divide this one over divide the value you have in the beginning and the cosine of 3 so find this value find this value Okay. How to sketch this one? Cosine and sine in the uh, range minus 4 and plus 4. You need some value to calculate some value here. This is what we calculate. We calculate for the exercise one. To sketch the graph, you know it has x intercept 0 and 0. Okay, for the sine, for cosine, yes, you have y intercept equal to 1. Okay, okay, I think we have done this one, but he's asking you for x equal to 2, so you he would like to prove cosine square 2 minus sine square 2 equal to 1. Just substitute here, find the value, and substitute, you will get 1. Alternatively, you can use, of course, your hyper key of your scientific calculator to verify this one. Because the hyperbolic function can be, value can be found by the calculator.